next year will probably be 90% capable of autopilot. Elon Musk out with a bold promise yesterday. He said there would be a million Tesla robocar, robo taxis, I should say, uh, on the road next year. I'm very confident about full self-driving functionality being complete by the end of this year because I'm literally driving it. Welcome to the Wii Robot Party. We have 50 fully autonomous cars here tonight. Cap, there's no steering wheel or pedals, so I hope this goes well. <laughs> you, you see a lot of uh, sci-fi movies where uh, the future is, is dark and dismal, where uh, it's not a future you want to be in. <laughs> in a crystal ball and see the future, you'd be like, yes, I wish I could be there now. That's what we want. So when we think about transport today, there's a lot of kind of pain that we take for granted that we think is normal. Um, like having to <laughs> drive around LA uh, in like three hours of traffic. Um, yeah, and for people that live in LA, I mean, you know, try to get from uh, Pasadena to, you know, El Segundo during rush hour. It's like, you can fly to, you know, another city faster than you can get to cross town LA. So, and you have to drive the whole way. Uh, unless you're in a Tesla, of course. Our Tesla already uh, does quite well at this, uh, you know, supervised self-driving. So supervised full self full self-driving is actually working quite well. When you when you get in, you'll see like it's really quite a wild experience to just be in a car with no steering wheel, no pedals, no controls, and it feels great. One of the reasons why it can be so much better than a person is that we have millions of cars that are training. Uh, in, on driving, so it's like it's like living millions of lives simultaneously and seeing very unusual s situations that a person in their entire lifetime would not see. But <laughs> hopefully, um, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's so with, with that amount of training data, it's obviously going to be much better than what a human could be because um, you can't live a million lives. Um, and it's also, it can see in all directions simultaneously, and it doesn't get tired or, or text or any of those things. So uh, it will naturally be, like, like I said, uh, 10, 20, 30 times safer than a human, just um, for all those reasons. Your average passenger car is only used about 10 hours a week out of 100, 168 hours. So the vast majority of the time, cars are just doing nothing. But if they're autonomous, they could be used, I don't know, five times more, maybe, maybe 10 times more. So you could actually, for the, the same car, would have five times as much value, maybe, maybe 10 times as much value. It's time has passed that where there, were, there used to be an elevator operator in every elevator. Uh, but uh, once in a while, they get, you know, they get tired and uh, they accidentally show somebody in half, uh, you know. So, so, now we have automated elevators. You just get in an elevator and you press a button. That's, that's how cars will be, I guess, on their phones <laughs> or, or, or watching a movie uh, or doing work or whatever you want to do. I think the, the cost of autonomous transport will be so low that you can think of it like individualized mass transit. Um, the, like the average cost of, of a bus per mile for a city um, not, not the ticket price, because that is subsidized, but the average price is about a dollar a mile. Whereas the, the cost of uh, CyberCab, uh, we, we think probably over time, from a, the operating cost is probably going to be around 20 cents a mile. Um, and price, including taxes and, and everything else, probably ends up being 30 or 40 cents a mile. 
So, yes, and you will be able to buy one. <laughs> we, we expect the cost to be below $30,000. Yeah. And I think there'll be an interesting um, you know, business model where, like, let's say somebody is an uh, you know, Uber or Lyft driver today. We, we do expect, actually, to, st to start uh, fully autonomous, uh, unsupervised FSD uh, in Texas and California next year. We, we expect to be in production with the, the cyber cap that, in, in 2026. Well before that, you will, you will experience the, uh, a robotic taxi via the Model 3 and Model Y program, and Model S and X too, uh, but uh, the, the Model the, the three, your 3 and Y will, be, uh, will achieve uh, unsupervised full self-driving um, with, with permission in where, wherever regulators essentially approve it in the U.S. and then to, and then to follow in uh, outside the U.S. Um, and and, and I, I want to emphasize that the, the solution that we have is, is AI and vision. So there's no um, expensive equipment needed. So the, the Model 3 and Model Y and SNX that we make today will be capable of full autonomy unsupervised. Um, and, and that means that our cost of producing the vehicle is, is low. Um, now, we, we are going to actually overspec the computer for the cyber cab. Uh, so, our, our AI5 computer um, will be somewhat overspec. And uh, because I think there's actually also an opportunity, sort of like an Amazon Web Services, where if the car is driving for 50, for 50 hours a week, there's still over 100 hours left. And it, it, there's a potential there to have a massive amount of distributed inference compute, where if you've got, like, say, a fleet of 100 million vehicles and a kilowatt of efficient inference compute, you have 100 gigawatts of, of compute, which is really quite substantial. Something we're also doing is, uh, and it's really high time we did this, is uh, inductive charging. So the rubber taxi has no plug. It, it just uh, goes over the inductive charger and charges. So, yeah, it's kind of how it should be. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I love you, too. <laughs> um, so one of the things that like, is really interesting is, is how will this affect the, the cities that we live in? And when, when you drive around a city or when the car drives you around a city, you'll see there's, like, there's a lot of parking lots. There's, there's parking lots everywhere, parking garages. Uh, there are, and, and so what would happen if you have an autonomous world is that you can now turn parking lots into parks. Green space in the cities that we live in. So I think that would be quite fantastic. Oh, and uh, also, what, 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 what happens if you need a vehicle that uh, is bigger than a Model Y? The, the Reboven. The Reboven is, uh, this is, a, we, we're going to make this, and it's gonna look like that. Now, can you imagine going down the streets and you see this coming towards you? That'd be sick. So this can, this can carry up to 20 people, and it can also uh, transport goods. So you can configure it for goods transport within a city, uh, or transport of up to 20 people at a time. So this is gonna, <laughs> the Reboven is what's gonna solve for high density. So if you, if you want to take a sports team somewhere, or um, you're looking to, to really uh, get uh, the cost of travel down to, I don't know, five, 10 cents a mile, then you can use the Reboven. Some people call it the Robovan, but... Uh... <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we want to do, and you've seen this with the Cybertruck, is we want to change the, the look of the roads. You know, the future should look like the future. Everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, 
it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques. It's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of down. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really going to have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so you could have your own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. And I think at scale, the, the, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction, long term. Now, you know, it'll take us a minute to get to the long term, but, um, but fundamentally at scale, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for I think probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars long term. So, and, and and what can it do? It can it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids. It can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, um, whatever you can think of, it will do. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Yeah. Because I think everyone of the 8 billion people of Earth, I think everyone's going to want their Optimus buddy. And there's going to be some, maybe two. Uh, and then they'll be, they'll be producing products and services. I, I predict, actually, provided we address risks of digital superintelligence, uh, 80% will 80% probability probability of good a good outcome. <laughs> Look on the bright side. Um, the cup is 80% full. Um, the uh, the cost of products and services will decline dramatically, and basically anyone will be able to have any products and services they they want. It will be an age of abundance.